There's Ricky Martin and Vente Picard, the A-Class remix here at 98.9 Northwest FM with Brian Peel. And if you translate that, it is called Come Here. That's what, it's, that's what it means in English from September 2016. We love Ricky Martin here at Northwest FM. Good morning. Thanks for your company today as we come to you live from Melbourne in Australia, streaming on uh, TuneIn, TuneIn.com, and uh, you can put in Northwest FM 98.9 and you can stream us any anywhere in the world and we've had so many tweets coming up and let me tell you that we've had a plethora of messages come in um, on the social media. Big fans of Grant Wormsley from the Screaming Jets who we've just had on the show so make sure you support those guys. Great Aussie music. Penny says uh, Morning Show 989 is your weekly fix for great new tunes, Throwback Thursday, delights and interesting guests. Join people from around the world and tune in now. This is really cool. Thank you Penny. Hello to Dan, uh, who's also hit us up on the Twitter this morning, and Jackie, who's also online, and we've had a message in from Blue Bay, who's hit us up on the Twitter. We've got Dancing Ducks on our timeline as well, little Dancing Ducks saying that they're uh, excited, and also Christian. Uh, Christian is from London who's uh, hit us up on social media. So keep the tweets coming. Use that hashtag, Morning Show 989. And if you're on Facebook, come and say hello. Facebook.com forward slash Brian.peel. And uh, if you love Instagram like I do, come and say hello at Brian Peel. Now, my next guest, I'm pretty excited about this. This is probably the closest I've ever been to an Olympic athlete ever <laughs> in my life. This is incredible. <laughs> Welcome to the studio, Tayus. Hey, Brian. Good morning. How are you going? I'm good. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Oh, for me, it's a pleasure. As I said to you before, it's really a good opportunity to our my sport fencing to be here and to uh, talk about my sport fencing. Now, <laughs> this is incredible. 2016, representing Brazil at the Rio Games. What an experience that would have been for you to, to represent your country as well. What in my that? country. <laughs> was in your home country as well. And just watching that back on television was mm. extraordinary. You know, just that there's an amazing setup in the arena and the supporters. You know, the Brazilians are very, very passionate yeah. about their sport. What was that moment like for you representing your country? Oh, obviously, if I say that it was a dream, it was. But uh, I spent, I, actually, I was really close to, uh, not, uh, to qualify to other Olympics so I'm not practicing only four years to qualify so in the end I had to practice for 16 years because I tried London and I was really close Athens I was really close uh, China I was pretty close so for me Rio was not only my hometown was a process yeah. that uh, and in the end was amazing seriously to be inside the American Mer Stadium yeah. was uh, was unbelievable the feeling when I start to talk, I can feel yeah. my, my body shaking. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Because I did, you know, watch that moment on television to just millions and millions or billions of uh, viewers around the world mm -hmm. and Brazil coming out into that arena with so many fans watching and I know how much the Brazilians love a good party. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Brazilian flag, walking out there, the cheers. How emotional did you get walking out on TV? No, I, I was talking about it with my boyfriend that I, uh, since the beginning to the end, I was crying. <laughs> oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I'm here. Actually, I had not similar because uh, Olympics is much bigger, but Pan American Games in 2017, yeah. uh, 2000, 2007 was in Rio as, uh, as well, and the open ceremony was in Maracanã, and the feeling was amazing. I was really excited. So I thought, if in 2007 was amazing for a Pan American Games, yeah. I cannot Im imagine for Olympics. So seriously, it was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been totally unbelievable. Yeah. Now fencing, it's not very popular here in Australia. It's it's a sport, obviously, that, you know, that we can play. Now, how popular is that over in Brazil? And why did you choose fencing as a sport? Oh, my gosh. Now, actually, uh, fencing in Brazil was pretty similar uh, in uh, Australia 
uh, ten years ago, uh, before Rio was decided to be, uh, well, Rio was chosen, chosen yeah. to be the city. After Olympics, fencing is getting much, uh, is getting bigger in Brazil. So because they invested a lot of money, we had the opportunity to training in another city. So the fencing is getting bigger in Brazil. Fortunately, I think that was one of the most important thing. Uh, after Olympics, but uh, I started fencing when I was six years old because my older brother, oh, he, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a long time ago, 28 ah. years ago, I started seriously my life. Uh, well. I, I, I cannot ima imagine my life without fencing. I don't remember, seriously. Really? Yeah, because since six years old, so... It's I, part of your life. Yeah, it's, it's my life, actually. <laughs> I used to say, I didn't choose fencing. Fence, uh, cho cho choose, choose and me, you yeah, know? Fencing chose you. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> so the, when I thought, no, now I'm tired, I want to give up, I have to work, I had the opportunity to be professional. So I say, oh my gosh, I have to keep facing. <laughs> and I could never imagine to be facing coaching. So for me, it's because part of my life. You've won a lot of titles as well in your career. You've won more than 20 national championships, 10 Brazilian championships, mm -hmm. and four South American championships. Yeah. How, what's training like for fencing? Because when I'm looking at it on TV, I just see two people, you know, holding out the. What's the foil. That? There are two, foil. three kinds of swords: EAP, sable, and foil. I, I fence foil. The difference between the swords are the uh, the area the, that you can hit your opponent. So it makes a lot of difference because EAP is all body, foil is electric jacket, right. and sable is uh, another electric electric jacket with sleeves and a mask as well. It's, it, uh, it's, uh, it's more details, but makes a lot of difference. This guy is kind of another sport. Now, you run some training sessions here in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that and what your current group of uh, trainees are like. My, my, how can I run my, or I used to practice or? Your current sessions now, you're having training. Do you train people here in Melbourne? Yes, now here I'm, I'm actually, I'm the process to not to retire because I have a couple of competition, but n I'm not practicing as before Olympics. But now I'm here as a coach uh, in Black Lords in Burwood. I yes. don't know if you know Burwood. Yeah. And there I have many, uh, I, you, I, I used to coach a lot of kids, mainly, but I have big guys as well. Calling is 40, 45, I don't know. But usually my trainings are one hour for training uh, training program and individual private lessons is half hour. But I'm happy because most of my students are, they are having good results. So I'm really proud of them. Fantastic. And I, <laughs> it's really good to see the younger generation getting mm -hmm. involved in that. And we're going to talk about that uh, a little bit later as well and how people can get involved. We're going to go to a quick track now and um, you're going to stay with us till 10 o'clock this morning? Of course, it will be a pleasure Fantastic. to talk about one hour of fancy. <laughs> that is uh, Thais uh, Rochelle, live in studio, Olympic fencer from uh, representing Brazil and uh, also running her training sessions here for the younger kids. But we're going to go to a next song. Are you an Enrique Iglesias fan? No! <laughs> Not so much, but I know him. <laughs> okay, play, I love it. We're going to play some Enrique Iglesias <laughs> this morning. We've got more with Tayus next and uh, James Mark coming up in the second hour. This is I'm Your Man in a throwback Thursday classic here at Northwest FM. You're on the morning show with Brian Peel and special guest Tayus. Ninety-eight point nine Northwest FM, your local station. You can hear us live on ninety-eight point nine Northwest FM and streaming online at www.northwestfm.org, northwestfm.org for more information.
Hey, this is Brian Peel from The Morning Show. Join me every Thursday morning from 8am for two hours of music industry and touring news, specialist local and international interviews, plus the occasional music special. We spin the freshest sounds from Australia, local independent artists, chart-topping tracks from around the world, and your favourite throwback Thursday classics from The Vault. The Morning Show, every Thursday from 8am on 98.9 Northwest FM. You're on Northwest FM with Brian Peel. Thanks for your company this morning. Coming to you live from Melbourne in Australia. Coming up to nine o'clock, and um, we've had some more tweets coming through on the timeline. Hello to Mikey Bax, who's showing us some Twitter love. Hello, Mikey, and Mikey is a fellow presenter here at Northwest FM, Planet Earth on a Wednesday. And if you um, were listening last night, you would have heard some classic Prince tunes. Yes. Diamonds and Pearls. Yes, I know. I was tuning in and love Prince and, um, geez, and I, I'm totally in agreement because how do you pick the best Prince songs? There are so many great Prince songs that, that you can uh, play on the radio. Hello to uh, Juan. Uh, Juan Manuel is from uh, Bogota in Colombia as well. So hello to Juan. Um, I've got a special guest in studio with me as well from Brazil, <laughs> Thais Rochelle. Hello, Brian. Now, you're calling Melbourne home. Yeah. Tell us about migrating and moving over to Melbourne and making Melbourne your home away from Brazil. What was that like for you? Well, well, was... For me, it was a big surprise because I was living in Italy, uh, where fencing is pretty good. It's one of the best in the world. And after Olympics, I moved back to Brazil. And I could never imagine to come to Melbourne because in the end, fencing here is not popular. But after Olympics, I asked to my, I had an invitation from Shanghai to work there. But I thought, uh, the culture in Shanghai is not similar than Brazil. So I will contact Rob, the owner of my club, Black Lord, that I told you. If they have some work for me here as a coach. He said, oh, Thais, now I don't have, but if you come, I can find because you just left the Olympics. So for us, it would be a good thing if you come here. After one week, he told me, Thais, I had some coaches here. They left, so please come here <laughs> in one month because I need you here. Say, oh my gosh, what are you? Was I was talking like, oh, do you have some work there? But like, not... I was just to, I don't know, I didn't have intention to come here. Yeah. He said, Thais, please come here in one month. But before, uh, but I said, no, I have to do a surgery in my shoulder, but I'm coming. And here is a dream for most of people in the world. That they Here is a country, amazing country, and I'm really happy in Melbourne. I think that I did the best decision in my life. And here I already have a boyfriend, I already have a puppy. Oh, you're all set up. You're all set yeah. up. That is yeah. so good. You've got to uh, set up a home away from home. Yeah. And do you go back and visit Brazil often? Actually, I had a competition last year in September. So, and I'm planning to come back to another national competition in September or November. So soon I'll be. It's a good thing to keep uh, fencing because I can come back. Now, the, the, the group that you coach, mm -hmm. what's the response like from the group? How old are the Well, I have. Uh, no, seriously, I have kids from four years. Daniela is my youngest. Wow. Yeah, she's amazing. Daniela, Daniela her, uh, they are Chinese. Yes. Uh, one four years old and another five years old. Seriously, they are the cutest girls in the world. Yeah. Uh, two, 13 is my my mailing group, but I have Colin, he's 45, and his son is my student as well. In, to in totally, I have 20 students around, in my group class, 13, I don't know. I have uh, heaps of students now. And how do you get involved? Like, if someone has always wanted to take up fencing as a sport, what's the best approach for them to take? Do they, how do they, if they take classes? Can they come and take classes with you, an Olympian? <laughs> No, yes, of course, but f 
Uh, fortunately, now I'm getting really busy. I think that I have three spots in my schedule, but it yeah. means that uh, I had a really good uh, group that start to want to have private lesson with me. But of course, if they contact me, they can have private lesson. But we have another good coaches in Black Lords as well. In Australia, we start to have a good coach. So if I cannot do a private lesson they, in our club we have Matt and Ned the Amy they are in the Australian team as well so hello Black Lords hey Black Lords I'm doing a good <laughs> I, I say Rob you see I'm doing a good advertising well, <laughs> well done where, where can people stay in touch or where can people get more information about Black Lords you can yeah. contact on a website oh, oh my gosh I will okay. check I will we'll check and it. I will get yeah, yeah we'll find because I don't have fantastic now, but we have the phone number and website as well that they can visit it but I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, fancy is not a popular sport, but I'm sure that it will get popular because it's an amazing sport. I, I think so. I, I think, think so. so. Absolutely. That is Thais uh, Rochelle, a Brazilian Olympic athlete representing Brazil at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games. Quite phenomenal. I know, sitting right next to an Olympic athlete here in the studio, telling us about fencing. She's bringing it to Australia and teaching the Aussies how to fence. How cool is that? You're on the morning show with Brian Peel here at North West FM, uh, just on nine o'clock, five minutes past nine. Special guest uh, James is coming up as well this morning. And we're running out of time. There's lots to get through on the show, but our, our second hour double shot is uh, coming up now and two tracks back to back, actually, from uh, a group who are extraordinary, uh, formed in Melbourne in 1975. And Australia's um, soft rock duo called Air Supply, who have been in the music business for a long time, and 18 studio albums, nine compilation albums, two live albums, and 27 singles uh, inducted into the uh, 2013 ARIA Hall of Fame. And they are currently touring Sao Paulo in Rio de Janeiro. They are currently performing in Brazil. Oh, really? Oh, yes. it's amazing. How's this for timing? <laughs> it's coincidence. My gosh. And I'm from Sao Paulo. It's incredible, right? <laughs> so it's quite fitting that um, we're going to play some Air Supply on the morning show. Two sh tracks back to back. Two less lonely people in the world. Let's uh, get out our little lighters and sing along to some Air Supply here on the morning show. Followed by every woman in the world here at Northwest FM. Good morning. Thank you.